and other stories. I am very pleased to welcome the speaker for this session, Karunisa Ma'am. Karunisa Ma'am is an award-winning writer, children's fiction, and the author of the hilarious Butterfingers series. Tongue in Cheek, The Funny Side of Life is her first book for adults. Her latest book for children, The Result of Oz and Other Stories, is a collection of delightful animal stories. She writes regularly for the children's magazine, Dim Dimmer, and most of the stories in this collection first appeared in that magazine. Her stories for adults and for children have been published in various anthologies. She is a full-time writer and lives in Trivunantapuram. I welcome you, ma'am. Now, I would like to hand over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Aditi, for your introduction and your warm words of welcome. It's a great pleasure for me to be here, to be part of uh, this very prestigious festival, the Orange City Literature Festival 2020. And for me, it's an added pleasure because I have a special uh, liking for Nagpur. When I was working uh, in Punjab National Bank as a management trainee, I, had, I was in Nagpur for I had a lovely time there. So those memories are fresh in my mind. And for me, Nagpur is a very special place. But this is a virtual meeting. I'm not actually in Nagpur, but an association with Nagpur is very special. And I would like to thank the organizers of this festival for having invited me to be part of this festival. Thank you very much. So now let me go on with uh, my session let me start the session formally and as many of you know i have been writing and as aditi was telling you i have been writing the hilarious butterfingers series so far there are six books in the series and they are fun books humorous books about a 13 year old boy who is really name is Amar Kishan, but who has been nicknamed Butterfingers because he's very clumsy and he takes disaster with him wherever he goes. So it is a school based, fun based, sports based uh, series mostly. And there are three novels and three short stories, so short story collections. And these are the six books, and I'm writing the set. So that is about my Butterfingers series, and that's about uh, boys and a few girls who are having a lot of fun and are in trouble and getting in and out of trouble. But while I was writing these Butterfingers uh, stories and the Butterfingers books, the books were published by Penguin Random House, I was also writing other stories. And these stories are uh, different from Butterfingers stories. Of course, something common to all my stories is that they are humorous. There is a lot of fun in them. Uh, there's a lot of punning. There is a lot of there are a lot of uh, crazy things happening. And these many of the other stories center around animals. Somehow, I do not know uh, what uh, your relationship with animals is. I do not know whether you love them, you hate them, you're indifferent to them. I don't think we should be indifferent to animals. Um, we may be scared of them. I'm sure I wouldn't want when I see a lion. I'm not, I'm not going to jump towards the lion. I'm going to jump other side uh, to, uh, behind. I mean, I'll run back. And but we need animals. We have to. We have to remember that animals are necessary for our environment and for our world to exist in a very uh, comfortable way. We must live in peaceful coexistence. So animals have a part to play. They also belong to the world as much as we belong to the world. We can't say that only we need the world. We need the earth. Animals are very much part of that. So my first collection of animal stories is The Lizard of Oz and Other Stories published by Scholastic. And as you can see from the title, The Lizard of Oz, not The Wizard of Oz, The Lizards. It's about a lizard. So my stories are not about huge animals, uh, animals that come to your mind as soon as you think animal. They are often small creatures. They're not always pets. They're often pests. You have 
mosquitoes that are my heroes, ants that are my heroes, termites that are my heroes, lizards that are my heroes, all those creatures that you generally uh, look upon with uh, disgust sometimes, with annoyance, you want to destroy them. But no, in my stories, they have a special role to play. They have, a, they have their lives to lead. So that is what I want people to understand, that every creature, however small, however big, has a role to play in our world. So that is the Lizard of Oz. I don't have time to tell you about the Lizard of Oz because I have to come to my story. But before that, let me tell you that there is this book, my first book for adults, uh, that is Tongue in Cheek and Other um, uh, Funny Side of Life, which is about an urban woman's misadventures. Okay, you're going to have a lot of fun reading it, the older people and the older children too. Now coming to the crocodile who ate butter chicken for breakfast. That is my latest book. It came out three months back, published by Red Panda. And you can see that cover. There is a very greedy looking crocodile with some chicken in his um, hand. And you wonder, what is a crocodile doing eating butter chicken? How does it get butter chicken? A crocodile it should be near the marsh, it should be near the river body, it should not be in a place where it gets butter chicken. So how does it get butter chicken? Well, that is what the story is about. It's about a boy who has always wanted a special pet. He does not want a dog or a cat or a rabbit or a squirrel or any of those conventional pets. He wants a crocodile. A crocodile. I want a crocodile as my pet. And he gets a crocodile, all right? And this crocodile seems to love butter chicken. So here is Amit who has to give his, uh, uh, all his butter chicken. He loves butter chicken and his butter chicken is, I'm sorry, not Amit, his name is Arun. Uh, it goes to the crocodile. How is he going to look after this crocodile in his house? Can you think of a crocodile in your house? He hides it under his bed for some time, but the crocodile is growing. And what about Arun? Narun is a stocky boy, plump boy. He is becoming thinner because his butter chicken is going to the crocodile. And he and his friends now wonder what they can do with this crocodile that is growing. How do you keep this a secret from your parents? How does he manage this for some time? And what solution do they come up with? What adventures do they have? That is what the story is about. So here is the story, the title story, The Crocodile Who Ate Butter Chicken for Breakfast. Now the other stories center around other animals. So there are 20 stories in the book. Each story is about 10 to 11 pages, almost um, 200 pages. This book is, it's, a, it's quite a thick book. And it's every story, each of these 20 stories has been illustrated by Minakshi Ayer. There is one illustration per story, a very striking illustration, a delightful illustration, like you see in the cover. So you have, I have as my creatures that I'm talking about, a snail, all right, a snail that belong that is going to a school that is called Shakespeare's Academy and then there's a crisis there is a turkey who is named Gobbler and Gobbler is worried that he could end up on the table at Christmas is that going to happen then you have a frog in my stories we have a, a tortoise we have a jealous tortoise I there is a Cinderella story where you have the where the focus is on the rats. Do you remember the rats in the Cinderella story? Do you remember the ugly the stepsisters in the Cinderella story? They are the heroes and heroines of my story, and they lived happily ever after. So how do Cinderella sisters and how do these rats get together and live happily ever after? And then there are stories about, um, there is a zebra crossing, which is a story about a zebra. It is set in Zimbabwe, in Bulawayo in Zimbabwe. Seize the day is a story about a fish. Then you have saved by tsunami about a dog snowy then there is this absent-minded professor 
absent-minded professor is not an animal. He's actually a professor, right? But the hero of the story is a monkey. Absent-minded professor, I think we all are familiar with absent-minded people. I can be absent-minded. Maybe you also can be absent-minded. You have people not knowing where they keep their glasses, where they keep this, where they keep that, hunting for things which are at arm's reach. So this is this professor is forever losing his glasses and a monkey comes to his rescue. How does that happen? So that is the absent-minded professor. Oh dear is about the deer. Oh dear, the deer family does not want to go to school and they land in trouble. A kite for Karthik is about a boy who has a strange love for kites. He also doesn't like ordinary creatures. Not that he doesn't like ordinary creatures. He loves them, but his favorite bird is the kite and he wants, he's fascinated by the kite. He wants a kite for his birthday. Does he get it? We don't know. Cola magic is a story about a boy who is always talking to a bag that has a cola on the back, all right? Not a real cola, a stuffed cola, all right? That's the decoration stuffed on the stuff on the back, on the bag, and he is always talking to this cola. You know how we talk to things, inanimate things? You might talk to the your book, you might talk to your uh, anything, a tree. Here is this boy who is talking to uh, this cola. And one day, this cola, and this cola seems to be talking to him. Imagine the cola is talking to him. A cola stuck on a bag is talking to him. They talk about Australia. They talk about all kinds of things. One day, the cola is helpful in busting a kidnapping. All right, so that's what happens there, and so on. So there are all these different types of fun stories where you have unusual things happening to um, animals. True flies day. I know you don't like flies. You might even say you like a mosquito, but I don't know whether you will say you may not like a mosquito either. I think they come last in our likes, mosquitoes and flies. And here are these flies who are the heroes of my story and they are trying to get a day for themselves. Then there's a story about hens, white leg horns in Murgaon, Republic Day and Parade is a story about a cat, a cat who his owner uh, thought was a male cat. So this boy, Sudeep, called him, had named him Napoleon. One day, he found that the cat's bulging stomach was not because the cat was greedy and eating a lot, but it was going to have kittens. So he says, goodness, I have called this cat Napoleon. And he changes the cat's name to Josephine the wife of Napoleon, and one day the cat disappears. So Sudeep runs after the cat, goes to find out that is the day of, that's a Republic Day. He somehow manages to get into the place where the parade was happening and something, something, something happens. So these are several of these stories. Now, what I thought I would do is, instead of just telling you bits and pieces here and there, as I've already said, I will concentrate on one story. I will tell you one story because, you know, all the other stories, I did not tell you the full story. I just told you this is happening. Then what? You read and find out. This unusual thing happens. So you have to read to find out. You have to solve the mystery. But the story, Chip and Monk, that is the story that I am going to read to you, tell you, all right? Chip and Monk. Chip and Monk, this story is about two squirrels, all right? Two squirrels. And they are always in the garden of a boy whose name is Siddhant, all right? Siddhant. Generally rushing around, jumping about, they rush up trees, they run on the walls, always running races, and they make a lot of noise. So they are hyperactive squiddies. Ever since they had been able to see and move, 
life was all about moving at lightning speed over whatever lay in their path. So though they were palm squirrels, they were very tiny, all right, very small squirrels, and they resembled the chipmunk. Who is a chipmunk? Dear American relative. So closely that dear father, what did he do? He gave them the name Chip and Monk. So he called his two children, your Chip, your Monk, your Monk, your Chip. And then what did he do? He thought he has done enough for his children. He disappeared from their lives. But Chip and Monk didn't really need his father, uh, their father or mother. They were very happy with each other. And they were enjoying life, always outside making a lot of noise. Now, one day, Siddhant's father was reading a newspaper and he laughed and he said to his family, to Siddhant, to his wife, this is crazy, he said. Do you know what's happening uh, in the world? What squirrels are doing abroad? In Germany, a squirrel was arrested for following a woman around. In the UK, a squirrel knocked on beer bottles, got drunk. And in the US, a smart squirrel stole thousands of pounds of nuts. And look at our squirrels, useless noise makers. Because Chip and Monk were making so much noise that he got very irritated with him. And what did he do? What did he have in his hand? A newspaper, the one he was reading, he threw it at them. Did you hear that? Chip jabbered to Monk, trying to overtake him as they fled up the nearest tree. Squirrels abroad are getting in the newspapers, and the newspapers for frightening women, getting drunk, stealing nuts. And what are we doing? Running for our lives when newspapers are thrown at us, Monk giggled. I won, he added, having beaten Chip to the top. They were running up, so he has overtaken Chip. So he says, Monk says, I won. Be serious. That man was right. We are just useless noisemakers, especially you. There's no need to crow over me so loudly. Chip flicked his tail in swift arcs to show his annoyance. Haven't you seen squirrels? They have this bushy, their bushy tail that goes shush, shush, shush. I want to be in the papers too. How? asked Monk. We could imitate foreign squirrels. How? Monk asked again. Let me think. And if you say how one more time, I will push you down the tree. Monk was about to ask how, but thought better of it. Sat on his tail as Chip went silent. Why did Chip go silent? Chip is the cleverer of the two. All right. Chip is the leader. Monk follows him. So he's thinking, tap, tap, tap. Finally, he spoke. We can't steal heaps of nuts. There aren't enough for us either. Where do we store them? We don't drink beer either. So what can we do? What? Asked Monk. He was relieved. He didn't have to ask. How? What the German squirrel did, stupid. Let's follow someone on the road. But how? I mean, why will that become news? Monk looked puzzled. I don't know, Chip admitted, but let's try and see what happens. I bet the German squirrel also had no idea he would make it to the papers. The next day, what they do? Stop on their adventures. Chip and Monk took their positions on the road, all set to make newspaper history. We are going to be the papers. Let's follow that girl. Chip shrieked loudly to Monk, make the girl jump. Monk jumped too, and they began to follow her. Now, what did this girl do? She got a call on her mobile. Haven't you seen these young girls call on her mobile? So she was behaving in a very erratic manner. She was strolling about, talking on the phone all the time. Then suddenly she will walk fast. Then she will stop. So these poor squirrels, they'll have to run after her. They'll have to break abruptly. And they really do not know what this girl would do next. They scrambled after her, falling over each other in their effort to keep pace with her. Then for no reason, she took off across the road, making wild gesticulations, and then stopped at the other end, again talking on the phone. The squirrels found it very challenging to keep her in sight because there was heavy traffic, but somehow they succeeded. 
Finally, what did she do? She hailed an auto that stopped where? In the middle of the road. She dived into it and was gone. She hadn't even noticed them. Now, what about Chip and Monk? They had followed her to the auto and they found to their horror, the auto is gone. They are in the, in the middle of the road and there is a huge car coming upon them. The two squirrels closed their eyes and lay still as the car went over them. Because they were tiny, they escaped without even touching them leaving them unharmed but shaken. Oh, enough of this chip, protested Monk, shaking like jelly at the narrow escape they had. It's good we are so tiny. Otherwise, we would have turned into small furry carpets on the road. Yes, this road isn't safe, Chip agreed. Let's choose one that has a safe pavement and we will pursue an older lady, these young girls, crazy, reckless creatures, talking on their phones all the time when there are so many vehicles on the road. It's so dangerous. After a little while, they saw a sweet lady walking on the pavement. Tip began to trail her. He signaled to Monk, follow me. They thought they were being discreet. But suddenly, this gentle-looking lady stopped picked up a stick from the roadside and turned on them with a snarl. She threw the stick after them and the squirrels ran up a wall towards safety. Where did the uh, stick land? On poor Monk's tail. Monk yawned and caressed his tail. What deceptive looks, he complained, ferocious lady. But she has a good aim. She got me on my tail. Forget her, Chip said. Look, let's follow the grumpy old lady. She looks the sort who might complain about us to the police and then who knows, we might get arrested and then we'll be in the papers. Ha, don't go by looks, Monk warned. But Chip had already begun to frisk after her and poor Monk was forced to follow. They screeched from behind to get her attention, but the uh, lady didn't seem to notice anything. She didn't seem to hear them. I think she must be deaf, Monk whispered to Chip. The squirrels didn't give up. They continued to follow her, to tell her. After a while, the old lady stopped. She turned. And coming close to them, she purred in a gentle voice. What sweetie pies! You're so sweet! Come, dears, you will make a nice meal for my Caesar. Who is who could her Caesar be? Probably her dog. She, her hand came out to grab Monk and caught his tail. With a shriek of fright, Monk pulled himself free and scuttled away, chip close behind him. That's it. Monk gasped when they finally stopped. <sighs> Breathing heavily, he complained. All are after my tail. You do all your following on your own, Chip. I'm not coming with you again. Please, Monk, one last time, Chip pleaded. Finally, Monk relented and suggested they follow a schoolboy on a cycle. So there is the schoolboy on a cycle. As they approached a newly built bridge, Chip said, the boy doesn't even know we are following him. Why don't we draw his attention with a scream? You know how they can scream, right? Tiny creatures, but their voices are so so loud. So together, they uttered one loud, sharp, and sudden screech that would have woken up the people who are asleep, brought to life people who are dead, and revived people who were unconscious. Such a loud scream. The boy, frightened out of his wits, he swerved to see who had made this noise. And what happened? He lost his balance. The cycle wobbled and it fell across the road. When it fell across the road, right behind, there was a vegetable cart. That overturned and sent the vegetables all over the road. There was the screeching of brakes because there was a school bus right behind. It came to an abrupt stop. And there were vehicles one behind the other, behind the other, behind the other, and a domino effect happened. The vehicles, everyone had to brake and stop and brake and stop. 
alarm that all this chaos they had created, Chip and Monk decided, let's go away from here, let's escape. They ran away from here, went back to Sidan's garden and went up a tree to safety. They did not know what had happened. This is what happened. The driver of the bus stormed out to shout at the vegetable seller. What do you think you're doing? All your vegetables on the road, I have to reach school. Now the vegetable seller started yelling at the cyclist. The cyclist, the school boy, he could only babble something about two squiggles who were responsible for the chain of events. Now each one was accusing the other, the school driver accusing the vegetable seller, the vegetable seller accusing the school boy, the school boy accusing the, the squiggles. And at that time they heard a huge noise, an unbelievable thunderous noise as if a bomb had burst. Shout everyone into silence. What is this noise? What was the noise? The new bridge had caved in. The new bridge had broken. The new bridge had fallen. We hear about this happening to new bridges, right? We have new bridges built and then they just collapse. After the initial shock, everyone rushed to take a closer look. No casualties, said someone in relief. There weren't any vehicles on the bridge. That's why, said another. The driver of the school bus was too stunned to say anything because he had all these school children in his bus. Imagine if he had been on the bridge, the bridge had fallen and all of them would have died. He just couldn't think of how narrow an escape they all had. And then this boy, the school boy who was very shaken said, it was all because of those squirrels. He said, they saved us. If they hadn't made that noise, I would not have fallen. The vegetables would not have fallen. The bus would not have stopped. And we would all have been on the bridge when the bridge collapsed. But these great saviors, Chip and Monk, they have no idea about the role they played in saving all these lives. They, because they left before that, they were having a lot of fun the next morning as usual. And as they were running all across the windowsill, they heard the word squirrel. And they stopped to listen. What about squirrels? A squirrel is in the news today too. Maybe two squirrels, they heard Sidan's father tell his family, newspaper in hand. It seems the wild screeching of two squirrels scared a young schoolboy into falling from his cycle. And a series of accidents followed because of which there were no vehicles on the new bridge when it collapsed. Would you believe it? Our Indian squirrels saved all those people. What? Could it be us? Screamed Chip. Shoo! What use are you, you noisy squirrels? Useless noisemakers, shouted Siddhant, chasing them away with the newspaper as usual. So they run away. Again, going up the tree. Hey, Chip, I think we have made it to the newspapers after all. Monk panted as he raised Chip up the tree. Looks like it, replied Chip. But no more seeking newspaper headlines for me. I have had enough adventures and fights to last me a lifetime. By the way, I won. This time he has overtaken, Chip has overtaken Monk to the top of the tree and he says, by the way, I won. He showed his buck teeth to Monk in a triumphant grin. So that is the story of Chip and Monk. I hope you enjoyed this story. It's a fun story and the other stories are also a lot of fun. The green-eyed monster is a story about tortoises, about Sitara, the Indian star tortoise, who is very jealous. Green-eyed monster means being very jealous and can't stand two old type to tortoises that are, that have been brought to the Mysore Zoo. New entrance, I'm sorry, Sitara is the new entrant to the zoo and there are two old tortoises in the Mysore Zoo who have a record for being 
growing old together, 70 years old, and people come to see them and not him. He's the star tortoise. So he thinks up, plots something. He thinks up something to get them to fight with each other, all right? So what happens? I don't know, you'll have to read and find out. Then there is a story, Yankee Uncle. Yankee Uncle is a story about a rat. A rat from America coming to India in a suitcase. And that is why he's called Yankee Uncle by the black rats in the house to which he has come, all right? And they're always in trouble. People want to, the people in the house want to poison the rats. But Yankee Uncle has a lot of smart ideas. He always says, we gotta do something. We gotta do something. We can make uh, good plans and escape. So that is what happens. So these are all these uh, stories, 20 stories here. I hope you enjoy reading them and uh, laugh a lot and also realize that we need animals in our lives. May not be exactly inside your house, but we need them on our larger home, which is the earth. And we should look at creatures with love and tenderness. So thank you very much. And Aditi, if you have any questions that have been put, or you can ask me some questions if you want. We have another um, seven minutes left, uh, right? Yeah. Yes, eight minutes. Yeah. I have two questions. First, yes. Uh, the way of telling stories of your book basically suggests turning into antagonists into protagonists. Antagonists turning into protagonists. Yes, in the sense that um, see, we uh, think of many of these creatures as uh, as pests, as thing as creatures that we want to destroy, right? See, a fly, a mosquito, a lizard, even a crocodile. Crocodile is, is dangerous. It looks very lethargic, but it is. It, it can pounce on you. It can open its jaws and gobble you very quickly. So crocodiles are creatures that we look upon with fear. They are all antagonists, if you look at it that way. Not all of them, many of them. So that is why, um, so my aim is to make heroes of these unlikely heroes. So this larger umbrella term that I'm using is animal stories. But I have in my stories, not just animals, there are birds, there are insects, there are fish, so there are reptiles. So there are all these creatures who find a place between the pages of these two uh, books. So my, I deliberately tried to see how we can make heroes of these creatures. That is why, as uh, the question says, these antagonists become protagonists. The focus is more on them and how they sometimes, they're not exactly getting the better of the humans, but they're leading a life of their own in which uh, they, uh, they, they, want, uh, they want to uh, earn some respect. In fact, in my mosquito story, there is this mosquito who realizes the male mosquito, he's, that is in Lizard of Oz, and the male mosquito is very unhappy that, the, that he's got such a short life on Earth. The female mosquito has a much longer life, but the female mosquito is responsible for spreading diseases. It lays all those eggs. So he says, that's very unfair. You live longer, he's telling his mother, you live much longer than uh, males when we do nothing, but we are also killed by humans. They hate us. So she says, do you really think humans will try to find out your gender? Are you male, female, and kill only the uh, female and say male, male, you don't do anything, you go away. See, you're being so silly. You, you will get killed anyway because you're a mosquito. You might. So make the best of your short life. But no, this mosquito says, no, 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 no. Maybe I can do something to help humans. And he actually does something, all right? So what he does, I don't want to disclose and uh, you know let the cat out of the bag. So you'll have to read to find out. But that's the way I have written my stories to bring some dignity into the lives of creatures that we generally look upon with 
annoyance, disgust, fear, and uh, we would like to destroy them. So I want to say that we should not do that, right? Of course, saying all this is mosquito sensitivity. Can we do Kill it. It's going to be possible, but I'll do that. Uh, that's my instinctive reaction, right? You have to save yourself. So, but that's what I'm going to do, right? So whoever uh, asked me that question, you're, you're right in your observation. Yes, thank you. So what's the next question at the end? Ma'am, the next question is, so uh, the moral of the story is uh, anything happens, happens for a reason? Everything happens, happens for? A reason? A reason, reason. Ah, um, see, uh, anything that happens in the world happens. Whether it's for a reason or not, things happen. And sometimes some things that happen trigger off something else, right? There is a sequence of events that happen because something has happened. So, um, seriously, I don't uh, try to bring obvious models into my students because I know that when I was growing up, uh, I, I didn't particularly like to read stories where the moral was in your face. Where somebody is trying to teach me something very obvious. All right? For me, the story is very important. Story must be very imaginative. The story must be interesting. It must be interestingly told. It must have characters that appeal to me. And while the story happens, and when the story comes to an end, I would be very happy. I would be learning something. That is what you mean by moral, right? Something that teaches you something. So that moral is woven into my story. You imbibe some values unconsciously by, by uh, reading my stories. So uh, if you want, you can say that um, everything happens for a reason because that's how I have crafted my stories. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Aditi. So is that it? That's all. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thanks. So now we have it as three more minutes. I think it's time to wind up. Yes, ma'am. So I, I would like to thank each and every one of you, whoever is joined, uh, who is part of this uh, festival, whoever has joined in. Thank you very much for being here. And I hope you will all look at animals with. Uh, tenderness and please do read my books too and enjoy them i hope you will enjoy them and aditi thank you so much for being here thank you thank so you. much ma'am for this wonderful session you took all of us in a in a sto wonder, story wonderland and it was very pleasure having you today for this topic i also extend my gratitude to the publishers red panda westland and amazon company on behalf of Orange City Literature Festival, we sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for the session and knowledge shared with us. Thank you, ma'am. Our next session for the day is Thank from you, one day with Tuhin Sina on Is This Ram Raj? So please stay connected with us. Thank you. Twenty years of existence. Two universities, 23 educational institutes, offering 137 courses. Rai Sony Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.